Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to do some strategic piano practice of the B section of Furelise. So we're just going to get right into it, I think. So as you probably know, or you might not know from other videos, but you know, right now I'm kind of drawing in some markers here to hopefully split the section or split these measures into thirds. Um, so these are what I would say are like third measure set markers. They're just little visual reminders of where the thirds of the measure are. It's not actually strictly necessary to write these in, but I'll, I'll do it for, you know, beginner and intermediate students so that they can see where the, how the measure does, uh, divides, I guess. So yeah, maybe we'll just draw in a bunch of these the student, they might, uh, maybe they'll be able to mark these themselves, or maybe it's not necessary for them. And they just happen to be usually little triangles. So, yeah, maybe I'll draw more of them this time. Have a little bit of a slightly larger example here. Okay. I think, uh, is this right? Yep, that's right. Maybe it could be aligned a little bit better. Okay. So again, these are like the three beats in each measure that we're dividing things up into. Um, here it's a, it's a little bit visually unusual, but it should actually be the correct uh, alignment overall. Sorry that the screen is moving around a bit for some reason. And then in terms of like the one measure sets, I mean, that would just literally be from, you know, first beat of one measure to the first beat of the next. You're always practicing like one measure plus the following beat, like from star to star, that would be a one measure set in my methodology. Same thing, of course, um, from there to there. So yeah, probably not necessary to mark all of the uh, stars, but, um, but that's what, that's what it would be. Um, okay. So, uh, and then we have to determine, like, really at this point, like, what type of set should the student start with? Should they start with one measure sets, playing from star to star? Should they start with uh, third measure sets, playing from triangle to triangle? Let's say that they maybe aren't, you know, they're a beginner student, they want to start from something conservative. So it could be that they're starting with uh, one measure separate hand sets. So let's say that we do that. So that would mean that we have to play from star to star in each instance. Now the way of constructing the one measure separate hand sets is going to be adding in reverse, of course. Uh, so it depends on the section, like how necessary it is to, I guess, uh, to add like very small sections in reverse or how much of it you want to do. But for instance here, uh, let's just assume that things go fairly smoothly. They're able to carry this out, right? You play just this part, then this, then this, then this. Maybe then they play from the beginning of the measure. And the result is that they end up being able to play from star to star. So then we would mark a one here in regular brackets, which means right hand played from there to there. And then from here to here in the left hand, it could be similar. So they play just this then this, then this, maybe they're adding one chord at a time, they can always go back to the last two notes or two chords if necessary. But they add all the way back to the beginning and then they will, you know, mark this in the left hand. Um, actually, I guess I'm a bigger fan usually of concentrating on one hand and then the other. So you broke my own rule there for a moment, but you know, nevertheless, like in the moment we, we did right hand alone, left hand alone. Maybe let's focus on right now. So again, in order to play correctly from there to there, it's very possibly a good idea to just do this first, right? From triangle to triangle, then you can start to add in reverse more. Um, so it could be from here to there, then the entire thing. That'll result in this one. So for every measure, uh, it's probably going to be that adding in reverse strategy that causes you to solve these ones in the right hand quickly. So again, this means from star to star, and then we'll just kind of continue that way. Right hand will go on. Okay, and 
Now with the left hand, same thing. It may very well be that you want to add in reverse. I mean, that you should always do this, really, unless you can get it pretty much instantly, and that probably means that section is too easy for you. But in any case, let's mark it in green. So we'll solve these left-hand ones. And by solve, it just means playing it correctly one time and one time only from memory. You don't worry about whether you remember it because, as we know from the learning research, it's good to forget and then relearn things many times for things to enter the long-term memory. So now we have these one-measure separate hand sets. The next thing we'd probably do is solve one-third measure both hand sets, not, not go directly to both hands from there to there. So if we're doing one-third measure both hand sets, and I guess it depends on the area, uh, we can look at this part first, for instance. So let's say that we want to do from triangle to triangle over here. That could be that, you know, right hand plays here, then the left hand, and then both, right? Fairly straightforward strategy. And then the result of this Let's erase the separate hand ones. I guess you could have kept them there as well, but we'll just erase them for the sake of this example, is that we'll write a third, and these curly brackets denote a both hand set solved from here to here, right? So that would, that would be the case in this case. And then you could still play from triangle to triangle over here. Now this note's already being held, so you would hold this note first, like the C, probably with your thumb out of time, um, and then play that singular note. And then, of course, left hand, you could play from there to there. If you play both hands, you would hold the right hand first out of time and then start, so to speak, and play from there to there. And that would result in this third. So a lot of the time we can do like right and then left and then both in order to solve these. And we'll probably just continue marking these, these thirds here. So... You know, yeah, second time through, that's what we might do. Uh, this part is a little bit more unusual. You could still certainly pass them in the same way. I mean, a lot of the time, students find it more intuitive to split this into halves just because of how visually it's made up. Um, but you still could actually go by the meter and actually pass thirds here. You could choose to erase these or not. Oftentimes, I'll erase them. So for the sake of this video since I'm not intending for it to be super long. Uh, despite the fact that I wrote markings up to here, maybe we'll just go to like around this area. So we'll pass these thirds here. Um, yeah, so then maybe around this time you're starting to get a little bit tired or something. You're starting to think like, oh, you know, it's, it's a lot of effort to be solving these. For something like this, it might require a little bit more intricate practice. It might be just this, right, then left, then both, right, then left, then both, in order to solve this third. Um, adding sixth measure sets in reverse, right, left, both, right, left, both. So then the next time that you come back, you would now try to increase to the ones. Um, now, in this case, uh, because we're trying to increase to something that's three times the size, it's possible you might not be able to increase to a one right away. It's harder than when you increase to something twice the size, of course. So it might be that you are starting to add third measure sets in reverse, like right hand by itself, left hand by itself, both. Or it could be that you're doing right hand by itself, left hand by itself, both. Uh, right hand by itself, left hand by itself, both. Right hand by itself, left hand by itself, both. And maybe then you're trying to do from, from here you know, so this is what you're doing overall. Let's say that's as far as you go. You you are not able to play all the way from the beginning. Um, it could be that you just change this into a two-thirds measure set here. Right, so that's one thing that could happen. And I would probably just leave it at this, at this point. Maybe the, a similar thing happens here. Maybe you end up with just the last two-thirds. Uh, maybe in this measure, it could be that it's the opposite. You end up with two-thirds over here. So another way to notate this would be a 1 and a capital A for attempted. But I think that for measures that, or in, for pieces that are in triple 
time that's split into thirds like this, I, th I think it's a reasonable next step to increase one of the pairs or one of the, uh, increase two of the thirds to a two thirds measure set this next time through. So it could be the first two thirds, it could be the last two thirds. Maybe in this case, it's the first two thirds, right? So maybe it's continuing this way. And again, to have solved this two thirds measure set, maybe you're doing this type of solve. Okay. So, and then I think the next time that we go through, by the way, if you start to get bored with this um, and it's taking too much effort or something, you could start passing more right hand sets here, right? Right hand, separate hand set, or sorry, right hand alone sets, you know, doing more of these. And then maybe you start to solve more some of these left hand, one measure separate hand sets. Um, maybe you're starting to go over here and, you know, you're starting to do more of these one third measure. Oop, that didn't work. One third measure both hand sets here. Right, so there's a lot of different ways to implement the strategy. I think that your motivation in the moment and your personality definitely plays a part as well too. Right, so we did these thirds for a while. Maybe now we want to start to, uh, again, do more over, over here. It could be you're starting to do like, you know, more right hand sets again. You're starting to do more left hand sets again. You go back and you start increasing these into maybe you're doing the first two thirds over here. Just trying to give you guys an idea of different types of strategic style. As long as you're drawing a new marking at some point on a fairly regular basis, it's probably, uh, you're probably on the right track. Okay, so then maybe now we come back and now we can do right, left, both right, left, both, right, left, adding in some way. And this time we're actually successful. Um, oops. So let's see if we can undo some of the yellow. So then now I've been successful in linking this into a one. Over here, the same thing. I'm able to do this one, turn this into a one. This could probably be a little bit better aligned. Okay. Same thing with this one. Maybe again, I'm I'm doing like right, left, both, and I'm adding it all the way back, you know, gradually, such that I end up doing the entire measure, of course. And let's see, okay. Then I can erase this, combine this into a one. Right? So what should be happening over time is that there's larger and larger chunks in the beginning, of course. We're planting seeds on the frontier. These will then chunk into like twos and fours. And then what will happen is you'll have a large chunk that you can chunk from the beginning. And at the same time, you've planted seeds of many different levels on the frontier. So that's how I would work on uh, the B section of, of Fear Elise. I, I think, again, I, I might have mentioned in a previous video, I'm, I'm sure that there's going to be other videos where I'm just showing examples of the logical methodology in all different contexts, um, sometimes with actual student pieces, other times with just hypothetical situations. I think that I, you know, I, I'm sure I'll record like other videos about, you know, general other, if you've seen some other ones, I have some other thoughts that are not maybe strictly related to the logical methodology. It could be about performance practice. It could be about playing very fast pieces. I know I haven't talked about my physical methodology yet. And it could be about like business or life related things or teaching related thoughts. Uh, but still, I mean, the logical methodology, I think just seeing more examples of it in action, it'll probably lead to more uh, clarity. It'll probably lead to more questions as well, too. So yeah, so if you find that helpful, interesting, please like and subscribe. Feel free to leave a comment asking me about some specific aspect that you're curious about. I'd be happy to answer. And yeah, looking forward to the next one.